The month of October signifies the beginning of Islamic Heritage Month in Canada. Islamic Heritage Month gives Canadians from all walks of life the opportunity to learn about the rich cultures of Muslim Canadians and the many social, political and economic contributions they have made to Canadian society. The Canadian government has urged the public to use this time to acknowledge the challenges faced by Muslim Canadians, particularly the acts of hatred and racism that these communities have been subjected to as a result of Islamophobia. Ottawa has issued a statement encouraging Canadians to come together in the month of October to make this nation a space of inclusivity, openness and safety for everyone. I am Halima Sadia at the International News Channel. Joining us today to discuss Islamic Heritage Month is Firdaus Ali. She is a spokesperson of the Canadian Council of Muslim Women. Thank you for joining us, Firdaus. Thank you for having me, Halima, on your show. And it's the first time I'm on TAG TV, so I'm very excited. So to begin with, what does Islamic Heritage Month mean for you? Uh, so Halima, it's a kind of a combination of many, many things. Uh, I think I'd like to begin with a celebration. You know, uh, uh, history shows us that the first Canadian Muslim woman or, or girl was born in 1867. Her name was Elizabeth. And since then, uh, there's been so many contributions uh, from Canadian uh, Muslim women. Uh, uh, you know, we, we've had Dr. Laila Falman, who is the founder of CCMW, the organization that I, I uh, am a part of, so Canadian Council of Muslim Women. And really, she was an educator, a visionary. Uh, you know, she kind of spearheaded uh, interfaith dialogue and a feminist. So she brought communities together um, almost 40 years ago, and that's how Canadian Council of Muslim Women was born. And since her, there are so many that I can uh, recount to our uh, recent uh, senators, Mubina Jafar, Salma Taula. Uh, so, you know, the contribution of Muslim women in Canada and the rest of the world uh, sometimes seems to be undermined. Uh, and for me, uh, Islamic Heritage Month is bringing all that, you know, the contributions of many Muslim men and women uh, together and to celebrate who we are. But I think it also is a time to bring uh, you know, the, the cause of Islamophobia to the, to, uh, you know, the um, helm and, and to, for people to recognize uh, that, you know, this is a real issue that we are facing here. Uh, I'd like to talk about a report from Statistics Canada, which says that from 2012 to 2015, uh, hate crimes against Muslims rose by an astounding 253%. So if you look at that number, it's unimaginable. And since then, you know, we've seen the mosque attacks in Quebec, um, uh, mosque attack in Quebec in 2017. Uh, we've seen, you know, a Muslim man being murdered outside the mosque in Toronto, Mohammed Zafis. Uh, we've also seen so many, so many hate attacks against black Muslim women in Edmonton, against Muslim women in Quebec, and the, you know, culmination of the, uh, where the killings of the uh, Afzal family in London, Ontario. So I think that, you know, this is a time to pause, a time to reflect, a month to take note that Islamophobia is really, really on the rise. And as a community, if we don't uh, do something about it, we don't know what kind of repercussions it would have. So since we are talking about the Islamic Heritage Month, so I would ask you, what has Islamic Heritage Month been like? Uh, so over the years, uh, Halima, as you know, that, you know, uh, a lot of Muslims and Muslim allies do a lot of things to bring attention uh, to the contributions of Muslims in Canada and the world over. Uh, but this year has been very serious. It's kind of, you know, like I said, a self-reflection to say, uh, why, are, why isn't the Muslim community being accepted for who they are uh, in a way that, you know, if women are visible, visibly Muslim, if they wear the hijab or the naqab, uh, they're kind of uh, really discriminated against. There's there's attacks on them. Uh, so I think that this year, Islamic Heritage has, Month has been a little different, at least for me and for the CCMW family, where we are really, really trying to work hard to educate communities. Uh, so, you know, I'm part of a pro project at CCMW, which is called Digital Anti-Racism Education 2. And really, this is all about empowering our women and girls uh, around countering Islamophobia, around countering online hate. Uh, I just spoke about hate and some gave you some numbers. Uh, just to add to it, you know, Race Relations Canada had a report, I believe, in 2019. 
and they said one in five Canadians have experienced some form of discrimination, some form of racism. And that's a huge number. That's like 25%. And when you look at black and indigenous communities, that number is even higher. So I think that, you know, for Muslim women, uh, that uh, vulnerability kind of deepens. You know, we are already facing so much. We face sexism. We fail, face a lot of cultural barriers, uh, homophobia, and many other things. And to add to this is, is Islamophobia. So I think that, you know, this month is really, really important where we want to train people around, you know, what Muslims are, what causes Islamophobia and how we can counter it as a community. You know, we, we cannot counter hate with hate. I think it was Martin Luther King who said, you cannot drive out hate with hate, but only with love. So I think that I kind of totally believe in that philosophy. And uh, we have some community trainings as part of the project that we do. Uh, you can visit our website, daretobeaware.ca. Uh, we have anti-Islamophobia trainings and online hate trainings. I just kind of focus on cyber hate and online hate uh, because, again, you know, our hate has transcended from the streets uh, to the online platforms. Uh, as Halima, you may know that many of our young women and girls are on social media, they're on Facebook, on Twitter. And really, again, when you look at evidence-based data, it shows uh, that women and girls aged 18 to 24 are really, really at high risk of cyber violence, uh, meaning that they are getting stalked, they're getting trolled, they're getting sexually harassed. So again, one of the workshops really deals with this. It tells you how you can be safe uh, on an uh, you know online space, and that is what our trainings are all about. It, it is the beginning of a conversation. Okay, so what are some important contributions from the Muslim community in Canada that we can highlight this month? Uh, Halima, I kind of shy away from that question. So, you know, I've, all, I've mentioned the first Muslim-born uh, baby, Elizabeth, in 1867. I can also point you in the direction of Dr. Lila Falman, also Hilvi Hamden from Edmonton, who kind of was uh, the first mo woman who built the Al-Rashid Mosque. But I feel that, you know, as Muslims, sometimes we uh, get asked this question so often, and it's almost alienating to say, I have to prove myself over and over again. Just because I'm a Muslim, I have to show and, you know, prove the contributions that I have made uh, to Canada. So, you know, the, the list is far and long. You have so many MPs now, so many educators, so many public health uh, activists, so many social justice activists who are Muslims. And I, I feel that, you know, don't single us out, right? Like, so we are an equal contributor, you know, to the Canadian society, uh, especially women, because, you know, like I did mention that they face so many barriers. Uh, sometimes it's from within the family from within their own cultures and they go out they are working women they are mothers they are sisters uh, they are daughters so fulfilling really really every part uh, of their responsibility and and also facing the added hate sometimes from their own uh, communities it could be their own muslim communities and sometimes it could be the outer communities so what i'd like to just uh, say is that you know embrace us for who we are right like embrace us for don't don't look at what we look like what our religious beliefs are because everybody's religious beliefs cultural beliefs are different and if you look at the canadian charter of rights we really have no right to discriminate against people for what they look like or what their religious or uh, beliefs are what their sexual orientation is so i feel that you know the contributions are many uh, too many to list uh, on this interview show uh, but I feel, you know, like Embrace us, we, we, we are part of the Canadian fabric and we, we are assimilating in the society. I think it is some people, very few, I think, uh, that are hating, that have a lot of prejudices. And I also believe that, you know, this hate comes from ignorance. It comes from fear. It comes from a threat that, you know, you are going to lose your space in society or your majority. So I feel that, you know, get rid of your fears, get educated uh, and, and, you know, mix and mingle with the Muslim community uh, just to know what we are all about. So if we go walk into the even health system, we can see a lot of uh, women, Muslim women who are contributing there and helping yes. there, which is very prominent to yep. see. And in business and every every as you said every in the every of of the society and sometimes you may not know halima that they are muslim you know it's only when you wear the hijab or the naqab that sometimes you know that this person is of uh, the muslim faith but muslim men and women are really diverse right like we come from different sects uh, we are not a, a, a homogeneous uh, group of people we, we are different we are diverse uh, and just uh, I, like i may be on a show i may be doing things you may not even know that i'm muslim till i i mention it to you so i just feel that embracing us for who we are is, is the best thing you can do
So, you know, as an organization, Halima, we are doing wonderful things like we are doing advocacy. We are advocating against Bill 21 in Quebec. Uh, like I mentioned, we are doing a lot of training workshops. Uh, but I'd just like to zero in on a campaign that we have launched uh, on October 1st during Islamic Heritage Month. And again, that campaign is part of our Dare, uh, Dare to project, and it is called Hate to Healing. Uh, so as the name suggests, you know, it's really coming from a space of hate and we are kind of coming uh, to heal. And how we are doing that is by a very savvy social media campaign that is uh, on CCMW national uh, social media platforms, which is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, etc. And we've kind of come together with about 14 to 15 stories. Uh, these stories are actually lived experiences of Canadian Muslim women and girls who have faced a lot of hate, uh, sometimes in the form of a hate attack, sometimes being excluded from their own uh, inner communities or outer communities. Uh, so really, really very empowering stories uh, that we are launching every week. So we launch one video a week. And again, these videos are there for you to see on the dare to be aware.ca website. And I'd lastly like to mention that, you know, each video, each story is so unique. Uh, so, you know, no two stories are different. Uh, sorry, no two, no, no two stories are the same. And we've used an intersectional lens, meaning that what is it like to be a Muslim, not only a Muslim, but what is it like to be a black Muslim or what is it like to be a queer Muslim uh, facing facing this hate, this homophobia uh, that exists all around us? So uh, this is the campaign that we have launched and that we want to engage. And we really, through this campaign, are unpacking a lot of complex issues. And these women have been very, very courageous to come in front of the cameras. Uh, we've hired professional filmmakers. Uh, and we, for example, have a story, Noor's story from Vancouver, uh, Noor is a young girl who was attacked on the sky train in Vancouver and she had hit the media lines and uh, you know when she went on the social media with her experience of being attacked on the bus uh, for being visibly Muslim she was trolled she was abused and so really re-victimized and if you see her story it's very very empowering and you know these stories are about hope they are about resilience and how these women have coped with the trauma that they have endured. Uh, I'd also like to mention Naheen Ahmed, who may you may hear from, uh, you know, after after me. And Naheen is also a courageous young girl from Ottawa who was attacked on the bus. So I kind of salute these women for coming forward and being part of the campaign. Since it's a, a social media campaign, so which kind of reaction uh, it has so far received? What is your take on that? Uh, that's a good question, Halima. So because it is a social media campaign, uh, you know, we are open to all kind of feedback, you know, so we have received very few uh, negative feedbacks, uh, again, from people who hate, who are not open minded enough. Uh, but I think we have received a lot of positive feedback uh, with, with the impressions and with the engagement that we are seeing. Uh, and I, I think the most important goal of this campaign is really for uh, people to come forward just like they did in the Me Too movement, really, and, you know, come come forward and share their stories so you know each one of us uh, uh, is an immigrant to Canada and has different stories of racism of microaggressions uh, of uh, Islamophobia and I think through this campaign we want people to share their stories you, you don't have it's not just for women it's for men uh, for uh, non-binary people so uh, again our website is the best tool uh, you can come and share your story with us uh, and really we can carry it even anonymously we don't have to mention your name but I think stories have have a great great power to heal and we want this to happen through this campaign so what would you uh, explain to our viewers that what should people take away from this campaign I think from this campaign, Halima, and also Islamic Heritage Month, I think what we need to take away is that, you know, um, uh, our hate needs to end now. Otherwise, you know, it's like an eye for an eye. And, uh, you know, like we will just be hating each other and killing our beautiful world. Uh, so I think like, you know, come together because there is nothing like love, you know, like there is nothing like understanding another human being uh, and, and being part of this great Canadian fabric. You know, we I come from India, from Bombay, and, you know, uh, there is a lot that people People know about how the, the victimiz victimization of Muslims, the targeting of Muslims that is happening there. And really, let's keep uh, you know Canada a safe place. Let's keep it a place which is uh, away from discrimination and hate uh, and trolling. And I think that you and me, we have great power uh, to do that. And, 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 you know, as women, as visionary, as people who take care of our families, I think that, you know, Islamic Heritage Month is a great
great uh, month to start and to begin. And I would say that if you want to engage, you know, take our trainings, uh, be part of CCMW. You, you, you know, you can volunteer, you can be a chapter member. We have 17 chapters across Canada from coast to coast. And I feel that, you know, we need to start uh, that conversation. Uh, about how we can counter Islamophobia, how we can counter hate, and uh, this conversation really needs to begin now. So digital anti-racism education tool centralizes lived experiences. What makes this an important aspect of campaign? So, Lima, like I mentioned that, you know, not a lot of people are comfortable with sharing lived experiences. You know, some who kind of signed on to the campaign then uh, slowly kind of withdrew from it to say, you know, we, are not, we, we don't have that courage or that bra bravery to come out and to share our stories. So, like I said that, you know, it, it really takes a lot because these women have gone through so much, you know, trauma, uh, hate, hate attacks. Uh, and sometimes, you know, even, even the uh, legal system or the police system has been silent around their attacks. So, really, they have been re-victimized in so many so many ways uh, so i feel that you know this campaign is really different because it is a real stories it is stories uh, you know of homophobia of sexism of ageism of ableism as well like we have a young uh, muslim woman called maria bangash uh, she is a muslim woman living with disabilities uh, so really she brings forward her challenges you know as to how it is being a muslim uh, in the school system of canada being someone who was uh, is living with a disability how, what was it like for her to edu advocate for herself, you know? And we continue to hear like so many rants against immigrants, you know, even by our polit political leaders now. Uh, and really that, you know, if we don't voice it, if we don't talk about it, uh, I think that, you know, it might be too late and we might get overshadowed uh, by all the hate that is, uh, you know, or engulfed, I should say, by all the hate that is going around us. So as a South Asian myself and being a Muslim woman, I think one message I'd like to give is that, you know, do not be silent. You know, I too was uh, silent for many years. Uh, I've celebrating 25 years of being in Canada. So sometimes, as South Asian women, we become very complacent. Uh, we feel it is not our role to talk. Uh, you know, maybe it's a it's a patriarchal way sometimes that we are used to that you know it's only the men who need to talk. But I kind of feel that you know, as women, we have great power good power, you know, great power over, uh, you know, where we can win our families and our children, uh, we can advocate for ourselves and for them. And so to use this, you know, to be an active voice, whether it's in social justice issues, or in, in, on the political landscape, uh, we must talk and not be silent. So you're talking about the involvement. So let's, uh, my next question is following this. How can our viewers get involved in Islamic Heritage Month? You your take on that? Yes. Um, so I think many ways, uh, Halima, so, you know, you can Google and find out the wonderful activities that are going on, maybe in your local community center or your local public library, uh, depending on where you are. But I would say that, you know, if you are wanting to fight uh, that good fight against Islamophobia, I think the best way to start is to kind of go on our website, again, Dare to be Aware, sign up for a training. We do have a lot of community trainings uh, around countering Islamophobia, countering online hate, and really to be an ally, right? Like, so once you take this training, uh, you can actually train members from your own local communities. So what you could do is, you know, uh, we, we give you the tools, we give you the presentation. And for example, if you're part of a mosque or a temple or any other, you know, workplace and organization, you can take take the training to them and you know spread the word because like i said you know um, lots of a lot of hate stems from ignorance from hate from prejudice uh, and you know we want to do away with that so you know start by getting yourself trained and, and start also by you know engaging on our campaign there are similar campaigns just like ours which are you know against hate against racism against islamophobia uh, so i would say be that active voice you know do not be silent that's what i just like to repeat so this year, Canada has been uh, facing some terrible acts of hatred, discrimination and Islamophobia against the Muslim community. How can we use this month to combat Islamophobia? I would say also, you know, you can write, Halima, to your MPs, your MPPs, as you know, how you feel really, really strongly about it. And I think that, you know, as women, we have already have a community uh, around us. So, you know, we have our own family, we may be part of a school council, uh, we may be part of, you know, a neighborhood watch. Uh, so I think that, you know, don't let the month slip by, you know, today is already the 21st, I think, of October. Uh, and I feel that this month, like I mentioned, is just the beginning of the conversation. It's not kind of the end of it. And 
And I think through the resources that I've mentioned, through many, many active Muslim groups uh, that are around us, uh, we can start engaging, you know, go volunteer with a Muslim organization if you really want to learn about what they are. There are a lot of Muslim food banks uh, and, and different services. There are, you know, homes like the Nisa home that I can mention, Sakina homes that is more for uh, racialized women who are facing abuse, who are facing gender-based violence. Uh, so I think that the more you engage yourself, the more you learn about them, uh, I think the more you can let your hatred, your prejudices go, and you can be part of a wonderful community that really is giving back to the Canadian society in many, many ways. So very well said. Before I conclude, I would like you to, if any message you want to convey through us, to the community, to the women, I would uh, rather um, more than welcome you to say so. Mm. Besides what I've already said, Halima, you know, I, I, I talk a lot, I think, but I think, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we as women undermine ourselves, you know, we feel that we don't have uh, this good power where we can convince others or we can cause change. And I just like to say that that is absolutely untrue. So I, just to the women, uh, you know, who are South Asian or diverse women, women of color, I would say that really, really do not underestimate yourself because you have so much within you uh, that you can contribute to, you can be part of great systems, uh, you know, go to your public library, go and engage with your children's school, uh, you know, just just call upon your neighbor. Sometimes, you know, in the Canadian world, we don't even know our next door neighbor uh, who may be suffering, who may be in need of something and, and really to build community, you know. So we are the people are, that are the agents of change, you know. So I feel that, you know, I'm, I'm also an Indian and a Gandhian and I say uh, Gandhi always believed that, you know, you you uh, the, the, the change comes from within you, right, you know. So so I think that that change is all there and we just have to step up and we have to make that change happen. I thank you very much, Firdaus Ali, for joining us today. It's been a pleasure having you in our studio. Thank you, Halima, for having me. Thank you. I had a very meaningful discussion with Firdaus Ali. She mentioned Canadian Council of Muslim Women's anti-hate social media campaign. Naheen Ahmed, a young Muslim girl, experienced a hate attack on a bus in Ottawa. She is featured as part of the Canadian Council of Muslim Women Hate to Healing social media campaign. 2017, I saw the bus coming and oh no, I'm going to miss the bus. I finally was able to run right into the last door. Anyway, while I was entering, um, some person decided to pull my hijab back, so my head went back uh, towards the door that was going outside. And by the time I realized what was happening, I turned around and the person who had pulled my hijab had ran out the door. So why was it so important to share your story? Um, I think one of the reasons I wanted to share my story was because um, I think it's important to see that like I'm a real person and what happened to me was a real thing and I'm not just another number or statistic that people see on a newspaper. Um, and also I knew I wouldn't get justice for what happened to me. Um, so at least sharing my story, people know that this is real and bring more awareness to this issue. So how did you cope with the aftermath of the attack? That took a long time. Um, I was very, very scared to go to any public space, whether or not like walking down the street or uh, going to a bus. Um, I just felt constantly scared. Um, it took me a, quite a bit of a long time to find a good therapist, a counselor, who could help me process my fears um, after what happened. And was there any help by the people who were on the same pages as you were? Um, the first people I talked to was my family. and. Uh, for them, it was kind of like um, they just kind of like shrugged it off as if it wasn't a big deal because I think they come from that perspective um, that racism is just part of being in Canada and we should just kind of accept it. So when what happened to me, they were very kind of almost unsupportive where they just didn't really um, didn't think of it as such a big deal as I thought it was. And uh, so my family, unfortunately, wasn't there for me. Um, and I think it kind of happens to a lot of people who come from immigrant families. They just don't know how to um, uh, help someone when they, mm -hmm. uh, after 
uh, such an incident. Once you stood for your right, so have you been like taken seriously and uh, everybody was supportive towards you? Um, right after the incident, not really. Um, it took some time for me to start talking about the incident again. Um, so it took a lot of time of talking to my therapist and really consoling me that what happened to me was a really serious thing. And um, after that, I started feeling more and more open to talking about uh, the incident. So has your experience made you more determined to fight Islamophobia? Do you think so? Yeah, it made it more real for me. I know um, uh, during that time of 2017, a lot of people were talking about the, um, Islamophobia as a big thing. And I felt that this is a really serious issue. And given what happened this year um, with the whole car, um, that murder that happened of that whole family, it made me more certain that Islamophobia isn't going away. Um, after all these years, and we have to continue to be more aware of this um, uh, Islamophobia. So what message would you like to give to girls of your age who have to deal with racism and discrimination in schools, on streets, and online platforms? I think one of the things, main things, is to say that it's not your fault. What happened to you it has nothing to do with what you're wearing what you did this is solely on the perpetrator and the person who felt like um, the need to attack you um, and I really want to point that out because a lot of people who are victims of these types of Islamophobic attacks feel like it is their fault that they feel dirty and disrespected so I really would love to emphasize that because it, it does feel like the responsibility is on the victim to have to fight back, but when you're in that circumstances, you just behave however your body instinctively, instinctively wants to act. So I really want to get that. So any message through us you want to convey to the community, uh, since you have experienced that and you have been through all that, uh, you have lived it actually. So what would you like to convey through us to the people? I really highly recommend um, getting just a brief introduction to bystander intervention. So if you ever do witness someone being harassed or assaulted in a public space, you can actually um, actually help the person. And I think um, when, you, when we get the tools, we can actually um, help our community members. And I'd really recommend that to people. I thank you very much for joining us today in our studio and it was nice talking to you. Thank you for having me. And thanks to the viewers at home for tuning in. I'm Halima Sadia, and you're watching the International News Channel at TAC TV. Like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification for our next episode.